Good morning, uh, Families for Justice followers. Uh, we're very lucky today to have the infamous New Zealander Arthur Taylor, who we're interviewing. Um, we're trying to get his views on the uh, legal system, particularly the uh, family court. Um, Arthur. Yeah, good morning, Steve, and morning, viewers. Happy to be with you. Yeah, and hopefully uh, my views might enlighten a few people. Yes, yeah, right. So it's probably similar in many ways to your own. <laughs> I've had a lot of experience in the family court myself when I was uh, in prison and fighting to get access to my daughter. And how did that go? Well, it actually worked out really well because we did actually get one of the uh, good family court judges. And that's a lot of a problem with the family court because it, it, the, the quality and kind of justice you get varies from judge to judge, as I suppose a lot of you experienced. But isn't that a major problem? They're supposed to administer the law and we're trying to get justice? Well, unfortunately, they've got a hell of a lot of discretion built into the powers they exercise. And, um, you know, judges are human beings too, after all. And, um, you know, you've got good human beings, you've got bad ones. Well, if they're just administering the law, how's that a, um, uh, going to be a problem? Because, you know, the law's supposed to be uh, consistent. Well, everyone's supposed to be equal before the law. There's supposed to be consistency across the board so that, you know, the, the, fit, the justice you get in Omaru or Invercargill should be the same as the justice you're going to get in Auckland State. But unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. As I said, they're human beings and um, some of them really think they're a law unto themselves. I know, we've noticed that. Yeah, yeah. So how do we hold those rogue um, uh, judges to account? Well... <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of the time you can't, you, there's checks and balances supposed to be built into the law, like your appellate rights, judicial review, etc, etc. But in reality, practically, most people can't avail themselves of them. So, while a lot of the work you guys are doing, um, you know, uh, uh, bringing it home to them, you know, personally, that um, these decisions they're making are affecting you and ruining your personal lives, um, you know, I, I fully approve of it. Well, here's the issue we've got, the Judicial Review Office. Mm. has had an enormous number of complaints about judges, but very few of them have been upheld. The judicial, the judi you're talking about the Judicial Complaints Commissioner? Yeah. Worthless. Your rights under, the, under that are completely, uh, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll never get any justice there because you'll either be delayed for years on end or, or at the end of the day, I think their record is they've dismissed 99% of complaints. And what does that tell you? It's worse than the North Korean presidential, uh, the margin that the North Korean president wins by has, has trumped up rigged elections. Well, the problem that we've discovered as citizens is that the right to um, a fair justice in the family court and to have a relationship with your children mm. is uh, totally skewed, uh, yeah. one way or the other. Yeah, and of course it's um, you know it's it's where it's where governmental powers meet the, the deeply personal right that you have your family life with your child. Well, most important right of all. I mean, what if, if you can't keep your family? What the hell else is the rest of your rights worth? You know. Well. That's one of the subjects I definitely want to talk to you about today, mm. which is the mm. um, Civil and Political Rights Article 17. Mm. Which, ICCPR. That's right, ICCPR. Yep. So mm. um, one of the things there it talks about is the right to have an uninterfered mm. family life mm. and a protection of your own reputation. Well, of course, New Zealand signed up to the ICCPR and also ICROC, the International Convention on the Rights of the Child. Um, and they, they deeply, um, they reiterate that over and over, you know, the right to a family, the right to have it uninterrupted, undisturbed, free from the, you know, disruption, any interference by the state, except where it's, you know, necessary to protect the child or the family. Um, but unfortunately, I've got to tell you that a lot of it's just window dressing. The New Zealand government signs up, promises to adhere to these international instruments, agrees to abide by them, tells it's, it's supposed to tell its governmental agencies to comply with them, but it's window dressing. Well, like say. as you know, Families for Justice has been claim, complaining for a very long time yep. about mm. the behaviour mm. uh, going on in the family court. And mm. we forced, by um, protesting outside judges' houses, mm. Mm. Uh, lawfully, mm. um, getting uh, Andrew Little to uh, look at a family court law reform. Mm. And we've had nothing. Well, I don't think you could say you've had nothing. I think you probably don't realise the impact you've had behind the scenes. A lot of the time... Um, You'll find you're being discussed at these judges' forums and things like that and in governmental circles. So, you know, at the end of the day, some judges will think in their mind, well, hell, should I abide by the law? Should I make a fair and impartial decision? Or maybe I might have these buggers protesting outside my house, annoying the hell out of me. Well, mm. the issue we've got is that mm. um, we can't hold these judges to account. Mm. 
the lawyers are extenuating the conflict. Mm. You know, some of us are in court for two or three years. I, I know. The, 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 the problem is these lawyers. You know, I mean, why would you bite the hand that feeds you? Let's, let's just be quite frank. Um, they, they've got two uh, sort of um, duties in conflict here. They're duty to their client and they're, of course, their own financial interests. Which do you really think is going to prevail in most circumstances? Well, why doesn't the judge consider that when he's um, looking at the case? Well, how can he? Because most of the time you're represented by you're represented by a lawyer and he's not going to bring that up, is he? He's not going to, you know, criticise himself or herself. But self-litigants are out there um, making these um, comments about the behaviour of some of these lawyers and judges and we, we've got nowhere to go to hold them to account. Nowhere. Can't go to the law society. Oh, they look after each other. Oh, of course they do. I've had many, many experience with the law society. You've actually got to be there with a sledgehammer battering their doors down to make them even even look properly at a complaint. You know. Or and then they'll turn around and say that you're mad, nuts, and whatever. And, oh, yeah. and next thing you've got the, the that's going across to a judge, yep. and the yep. judge is saying, well, you know, mm. Mr. Evans or Mr. Yep. Uh, Jim or Bob, mm. um, you, your behaviour isn't in the best interest of the child. Well, they want to sit back sometimes and perhaps think, well, if this was happening to me and my child, how would I be reacting? No, you wouldn't be reacting completely normally. There might be something bloody wrong with you if you were, wouldn't you? And they want to sit back and think, how the hell would I? Sometimes it helps to put yourself in another person's shoes. Some of these judges should be doing that. And they might understand that some of this what they call irrational behaviour, is actually really quite completely normal in the circumstances. It's because but, judici it's but judicial elite, they're not doing that. It's because of Section 272 of the Law Con Act, where they're exempt from any civil or, cr or criminal litigation. <laughs> well, they're not entirely exempt, but, um, that, you know, but basically, um, you know, they need to put themselves in little shoes sometimes. You know. Well, why, why don't they... You've got to keep reminding them of it. Do you think that the uh, legal system is the right place for a court? Most people are saying that an adversarial system mm. is actually not the best place well, that's for right. a winner and a loser when it comes yeah. to a parent and a child. Correct, but of course it's in the lawyer's interests who are representing you and speaking for you. They're your voice normally. It's not in their interest to have a system like that. I, I personally believe mediation should be the way to go. I mean, we know that mediated agreements are the most enduring, and I mean, everyone thinks they've had their say. The bottom line here is a lot of people aren't, don't feel they've had their say. They haven't been heard. Their voice has been taken away from them, and of course it's down to these blasted lawyers not doing their job properly or putting their financial interests ahead of their clients, you know, and the child's interest as well. And I've got a particular bone to do with, deal with that, some of these counsel for ch children, you know, see if it's all seized, uh, I think you're in a queue. I've got yeah. a definite bone yeah. to pick with a child for lawyer. Yeah. yeah. And we um, mm. took the effort to start protesting at some of their offices mm. because of their behaviour. Well, One that. in particular in Pukekohe, the other in Titarangi. Yeah. Um, and we've tried to hold these people to account, mm. but they're so blasé about their behaviour mm. because they're supported by the system. Well, it's, it's, it's virtually what you can do. Aside from taking other measures against them, it might be considered unlawful, you see. But don't think you're not being heard, okay? Every person that adds their voice to the to the to the clamour that's already ro that's slowly rising out there, um, don't, as I say, it's going to have an effect sooner or later. Well, wow, and it already is having an effect. Like I said, behind the scenes, a lot you don't see what's going on. Well, we we're, we're not it's helping to, to keep them in check. It. It's helping to keep them in check. Yeah. Well, all they've done is put a few more judges in the uh, panel because there were well, sixty thousand consumers last year. Actually, that's that's been a good thing. Actually, they've recently appointed, I think, about 23, 23 new district court judges, and a lot of them got family court warrants. Um, I think a lot of them will be good judges. I've, I've gone through a few of their biographies, and um, they seem to come from a a less conservative um, sort of background, shall we say? It doesn't help when judges say they listen to the professionals and not the parent. Uh, yes. Particularly when we're yes. fighting child, youth, and family over oh, Tamariki, which are oh. a lying pack of lawless buggers. That I've never met. They're dangerous. Again, it comes down to the quality of who you're dealing with. Your child's fate could depend on what social workers assigned to the case. You know, and some of them, and I'm going to tell you here, right, frankly, we all know the world really is divided into those of us who have got children and those who haven't. A hell of a lot of these social workers wouldn't have, they haven't got children of their own. They just don't understand. They've got all these degrees and bits of paper, but what the hell's that at the end of the day? One of my biggest concerns about many of the social workers mm. is they're not even New Zealanders. That, that's right. Now, how can the somebody... fastest way to get immigration in New Zealand is to yeah. go on the wanted list to become yeah. a social worker. Yeah. Right. I yeah. particularly dealt with a Chinese, but I'm not racist yeah. by any means, but no, no I dealt worries. with a Chinese no, no. kid 
yeah. who was telling me oh. and lying over the fact that my yeah. children were living with international drug I know, abuse. and I had the same problem with the Department of Corrections. You got people from different ethnic and diverse cultures. How the hell can they suddenly go from, let's say, the Moors and, 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 and what's okay and say, let's say, uh, South Africa? And a lot of them are these, you know, again, you know, some of these white racists that, that predominate in South Africa, they're coming here, they're, they're now populating our prison staff. Yeah, and no doubt, probably our OT staff, some of them too. Because they've got the paperwork, but they haven't got the, they've got no idea about culture, or what's right and what's wrong, really. Well, it's, yeah. they don't carry um, the New Zealand philosophy. No, they don't. And how they the hell could they? they? And the checks and balances that I met Kent would check, because there's been a massive increase in workloads on these departments, a lot of it brought on by their own interference, I should add, in cases they shouldn't have nothing to do with. Um, because you now, you know, someone's only got to ring up, somebody might have, have a beef, an axe to grind with you, and next thing you're the subject of a full investigation, you know, wasting everyone's time and undermining the, the protection of the children who are really vulnerable and who really need the health and protection, care and protection. Yeah. And that's another one, another thing I hate, hate, hate about the present system. You know, why are they wasting their time on people that, you know, are, are really innocent or, or don't need fair protection? Look at what's going on in, in some of our, you know, you, you know families. You know? There are some children that need to be protected. Absolutely, there are. Absolutely. You know, there's nothing that we disagree with oh. with regards that there are some parents that shouldn't have their children for violence, methamphetamine, mental yeah. health issues. Yes, yeah, always. Absolutely. And and was surprised to me that there is actually some parents that actually don't want their children. It comes down to this again, you know, these social workers who make these initial assessments. It comes down to them lacking any bloody common sense. You know, I, you, you've got a gut feeling sometimes, a bit of nouse, you know, common sense. You can walk into a situation and say, is this child really in danger? You know, and use that, you know. You know, but they haven't got it. They just haven't got it. They haven't been mentored and trained properly. So is it because of life skills or, or their... Um, own ethnic um, uh, tra uh, training and education. A whole and combination of uh, one, all of the above. All of the above. Right? One of the interesting facts that I came across was that 57% mm. of people in the North Shore mm. did not originate from New Zealand. That's right. Yeah, there's whole areas um, in the North Shore around Browns Bay and places like that. And please, other citizens in Browns Bay, I don't think they've got you. It's middle New Zealand, that's a bit. Well, it used to be. Yeah. Um, they're, you know, they're more, you'd be more kind of like Joburg or something like that. You yeah. Know? Or, um, yeah. I've had a personal experience with them a lot because one of them used to work at Perimeter Remote while I was in prison. And, um, you know, the black ones I found were pretty good actually. It's the white ones that, you know, the, 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 well, basically they bloody hated prisoners. So what the hell are they doing working with prison? They're supposed to be there to bloody try and rehabilitate them so we don't have any further vi future victims when they get out. Well, in my dealings with um, uh, child youth and family, um, of all the social workers, I, know, I think there was four or five or six of them, um, more than half were not actually New Zealanders. Yeah, right. Yeah. And they are there trying to tell me that there was yeah. there was nothing wrong with my children. Now I've got seven in jail too doing life. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, and, and, and there was no need for any of it. No need for any of it. They, they were all perfectly lovely, beautiful young children without any criminal slants or anything once when they were born. But so what that, happened to them after that? You know? But here's the problem. When mm. you go along to the court, mm. the judge says, mm. um, it was one particular judge, mm. who said that um, mm. he was going to take it. He took away my guardianship rights. Yeah, um, well, that's and, pretty drastic. And took it, and took away my ex-wife, justifiably, yeah. because that was after the second What, did he vest it in the court or something? No, he said that um, mm. uh, I listen to the professionals. I don't listen to the parents. And yet I've been saying for two and a half years. <laughs> that was a yeah, actually, actually, like well, I'm, I'm surprised we put that in a judgment because um, you know that'll be you know, that'll be perfect grounds for appeal. Well, thought, thought we court. protested outside his house. Yeah, well, yeah, well, well, maybe hey, maybe the next time some situation is arising, might be a bit more cautious about saying things like that. Do we seriously have to go to the step of protesting outside these people's? Well, houses? you shouldn't have to, right? If the system was working how it's supposed to work, but in the absence of it doing that, you might have to, right? Okay, everybody does can do what their conscience tells them they should be wrong. I mean, the one good thing we've got is Brooker versus New Zealand Police Supreme Court of Appeal. Well, there's actually a few cases that are, many cases have followed Brooker, so that was the that was because of the Supreme Court case, of course. That's right. Yeah, and, and that's absolute, that's absolute authority. But that section 14 of the Bill of Rights is quite plain and clear. You know, everyone has the right to seek and impart opinions and information of any kind in any form. 
Quite blunt, straightforward, couple sentences. But New Zealanders are getting very concerned that their, their, their speech, freedom of speech, is being slowly um, hacked away. And rightly so too. I've had to take, I've actually won them against corrections in the, in the Court of Appeal. I'm upholding prisoners' right to freedom of expression. Like when um, I had to take them, it cost them 86000 in legal fees to fight me and they still lost. Um, over uh, my right to be interviewed on TV, you know, um, and while I was still in prison. Now if they can't, if they lost that case, you know, over freedom of expression grounds, you know, you've, you've, you've right to freedom of expression is pretty solid, isn't it, if you're out here in the community and, you know. So these protect, all protect people's right to freedom of expression. It's a very important right. It's called the lifeblood of democracy. Yeah, so. So we, we've had to take this step, which yeah. we, none of us, many of us, oh, just sure, normal you know, parents, you know, just trying to protect our kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. My concern is, yep. why are the politicians not um, actually really listening to us? Because we've seen very little mm. result in seven years. Well, you, you, can, you can change public opinion around us, Steve. Well, I had a very good example of the prisoner voting case, right? When I started that campaign six years ago, back in 2014, before the elections, 90% um, of Kiwis, the average Kiwi out there in public opinion polls were saying, prisoners shouldn't have any rights, I've got no rights, etc, 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 right? Okay, because they didn't have the right, this is why it's very important to get the right information before the people, right? Without it having been manipulated or, um, you know, uh, curtailed by the media, right? Well, just to drive very slightly, 17% yep, yep. of people in prison, allegedly, yep. shouldn't yep. be in prison in the first place. And that's correct, yeah. That's, and that would probably be a conservative estimate. I would say it should be much, probably much higher than that from personal experience. But anyway, by the time we finished in 20, ooh, it was actually 2019, 54% of the public in the last Colmo Brunton poll before the um, government announced that it was going to give most prisoners back the right to vote, those who were doing three years or less, um, were in favour. Now what does that tell you? You know, we turned it right around, you see, so it can be done. You've just got to get the right information out there, because I'll tell you now, most people are actually fair-minded and reasonable people out there. And especially if they see it's in their own interests, they may end up in the family court one day, you never know. So it's in their interests to get the system working properly. So what do you think we can do to uh, um, get the system changed? Well, because got, the bureaucrats are not changing. No, of course they're not. They, why would the turkeys ever vote for an early Christmas to use an old uh, pair of Right? You know, they're quite happy with the way things are going. They're getting big, massive salaries. Um, they, they're just carrying on as normal. As long as they're not too many waves and they don't get too many queries from up the top. I, I, I if, you know, I'm of an age where we used to watch a TV program called Yes Minister. You know, you want to watch some reruns of that because it's all in there, right? It's not nothing new, okay? Well, that's not helpful to citizens. I know it's not helpful. Who are paying for all this bloody circus? We should be really, really frustrated that the billions of dollars are being squandered. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll tell you, if this was France, they'd be out blocking the bloody motorways with their trucks and probably kidnapping the bloody the bloody OT managers or something and holding them in the hostage in their offices. So do you think that um, the, we should encourage the Yellow Vest um, movement to um, develop stronger in New Zealand? I would say so, yeah. yeah. Well, what did Mao Tung say? Power comes from the barrel of a gun. Not that I'm saying the barrel of a gun, but, you know, the powers that be will never change, you know, unless there's something that makes them change. And what makes them change is a shift in public opinion because they can feel it coming. They've got their little feelers out all through the community. The SIS, all those sort of bloody alphabet agencies. Um, they, know when, they know when the groundswell starts to develop. So you just keep on doing what you're doing. And maybe doing it a different way, a more effective way. Alright, well, yep. thank you very much for That's your right. time, um, Arthur. I'll see you at one of our protests. Oh, I've no doubt you will, Stephen. I'm very passionate about, about this, uh, you know, Families for Justice and, and, and the Family Court in general. Because it affects all of us, you know, people that get in the system so deeply personally. I mean, I heard a story once about a cat in a parking building. A, a mother cat had nine cats, kittens, and she was looking after them in a parking building in New York, right? And uh, the parking building caught on fire. The mother cat went in there and got, was found singed and burning, etc., bringing every one of her kittens out by her mouth, you know? Ch parents and their children, they'll do anything to protect their children. Most of them, anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I understand fully where you're coming from. Okay. Thank you very much for your well, time. Today, only, only to please be of help. And hopefully some Thank you, team. Subscribe to Families for Justice. Uh, we'll see you around.